The chick, we have been married for 16 years. Me and him have been together for 19 years. We were very young when we got married. He cheated on me in the first year of our marriage, but I wanted to make it work. So, after that he had two EA affairs over the years, and each time I forgave. Last month his friend was sending him pics of his wife and I found out and just broke down. I lost it and this is where I crossed my line and I feel awful and now he will never forgive me. I ran into my ex a few days before I discovered the pictures and then I reached out to him on Facebook. Basically, just breaking down what happened and feeling awful so he asked if I wanted to come up to work on Sunday since he is a bartender and I am okay. Well, I am ending up sleeping with him because I tried to justify that my husband doesn't care at all about me. I then ended up having slept with two more times and chatting sending naked pics and videos before my husband discovered a discussion I was having with my enabling friend who basically says I should cheat. Then my caring husband who yes has made a few mistakes in his past was willing to forgive me because he never realized how much it hurts to be cheated on. I just had to give all the details of the affair well unfortunately I kept doing trickle truth thinking I can minimize what I had done. But each lie turned into another lie where now he can't believe me anymore and the sad thing is, he kept giving me chances. I told him the absolute worst of it but I did hold something stupid back about it being two videos instead of one and that one of the videos was on FB, edited. The video was me having fun myself no face was shown not that is any better. So now I broke him down yet again with another lie so now he thinks there is something worse that I am not telling and I can't blame him. I don't know why I was so stupid he was giving me all these chances and I just sabotaged it. I love him so much and regret what I did. I was never going to contact my AP again. I gave him access to everything. I really wanted to make this work and I thought that by never having contact with AP was enough but I was wrong it needed to be more I just thought the details would hurt him more but it was my lie. So now I don't know if our relationship can ever be saved. He wanted transparency about the details and I kept holding stuff back and that is not fair to him either. He says he never fully released how hurtful it was until this happened to him. I guess it triggered me because he would get pictures and videos from his emotional affairs and here he is hiding it and it kept going on for over a year with his friend's wife and they all knew and were just secretly laughing at me even though I know that they were not but in my mind they were. I just felt like he hurt me all over again from the Pia to the E I know it wasn't cheating but it crossed my boundary of no naked pics of people we know and he knew that. I know for 100% I overreacted and feel shame and guilt. I should have never done that. I am upset with myself because he was giving me a pass on of this and I kept screwing it up over and over again because something new came up about the details that I was ashamed to share. It was more like a trigger for me, I think. Like all the emotions came because he is being sneaky again and we had an agreement of no naked pictures of girls we know I don't think that is a hard boundary to follow. If his friend only sent his wife pics once but it was ongoing. I just snapped because I thought if he doesn't care then why should I obviously that was immature and stupid. Okay so I originally told him it was only one time. Then I told him it was only twice. I lied about the places. I lied about it being only one video. I was trying to minimize the damage because it my mind details only hurt more but I kept lying and didn't spill until he said he was going to talk to my AP to see if he can verify it since I kept lying. Of course, I just wanted to move on from the whole thing since I was not ever going to talk to him again. I have told him he could put Keylogger on my phone and computer. I will never do this again. Sitting across from him in the cold, sterile room of our mediator's office, I realized the magnitude of what I've initiated. The papers lay between us, a stark white symbol of our fractured union, waiting for signatures to seal our 16-year journey into a neat file of closure. I can't help but feel the weight of every decision, every mistake, and every hollow forgiveness that brought us here. It started with his transgressions, a betrayal that I bore in silence, forgiving and rebuilding after each affair, clinging to the hope of what our marriage once promised. But when the latest wound came, pictures from a friend, a secret mockery that cut deeper than the rest, I broke. The pain, festering like a silent poison pushed me over an edge I didn't know I was capable of crossing. I sought solace in a past connection, an ex whose familiar comfort turned into an infidelity of my own. In a whirlwind of misguided revenge and desperation, I matched betrayal with betrayal, my actions mirroring the hurt I'd been served. Lies weaved into the fabric of our daily life, a pattern too intricate to unravel without tearing everything apart. He, surprisingly, found it within himself to offer forgiveness, a gift I now see was priceless. Yet, I squandered it, drip-feeding the truth, thinking I could protect us both from the raw edges of my missteps. Each lie was a brick in the wall that now separates us, a wall that my own hands built. In this sterile room, with the hum of the air conditioner as our soundtrack, I look into his eyes, and I see the reflection of my own pain, magnified by the betrayal he now understands all too well. He's given me every chance to come clean, start anew with a slate wiped of secrets. But the trust that once held us together has been eroded by my trickle truth and justifications. I've learned too late that honesty isn't just about the absence of lies, it's about the presence of trust, the kind that can't survive half-truths and withheld confessions. The details I hid to protect him were the very things that poisoned us from the inside out. 
So, I pick up the pen, the weight of it feeling like the final piece of our shared life slipping from my grasp. With each stroke of my name, I feel the chapters of our story coming to an end, not with the closure I'd hoped for, but with a jagged edge that will take time to smooth out. I realize now, amidst the shards of our shattered vows, that love isn't just about forgiveness, it's about the courage to be transparent, even when it's painful, especially when it's painful. As I slide the papers back to him, my soon-to-be ex-husband, I understand that this is where my journey of self-forgiveness must begin. And perhaps, in this ending is the first step toward healing, toward becoming someone who can love fully and truthfully, without shadows and without lies. My comment, when this kind of betrayal happens in a relationship, there is no way you can recover, better for both parties to move on. Story 2. I'm a little worried about my marriage and would like to hear opinions, suggestions on how to keep handling this. I've been with my husband for five years and three of them we have been married. He's a great person and I love him dearly. We share the same values and because of that we haven't had major issues but it feels like the little stupid things we keep fighting about are slowly having a big impact in the way we interact and show affection. Ever since we got married, I've complained about the way my husband prioritizes his time. We were forced to have an international distance relationship for a year and once I came back everything was just different. My husband had a new job, new friends and pretty much a routine that offered me very limited time with him. These are some of the things I have complained about. It took me a whole year to meet my husband's group of friends. He would always inform me that they were hanging out and at first, I was fine with it but then it just turned awkward. They were all either married or engaged but would never plan something where their partners were also included and therefore in my husband's words it would have been weird to invite me which I understand. I also don't want to be the only girl with a bunch of dudes but again, why couldn't they just plan something out with the girls every once in a while? Besides his private events with friends my husband is not interested, doesn't have the time or energy to do anything fun. I'm always the one who has to ask for a date night and to come up with ideas of things that we can do together to bond as a couple. Those ideas are subject to his approval and if he does approve 70% of the time you can tell he's just doing it to make me happy. At home, he spends many many hours playing video games. He can sit in front of the computer and play games for 5 hours straight very easily. I don't have a problem with him having a hobby, it's just his time management that makes me really sad. Whenever I complain about not spending time together and how we don't share common interests anymore his excuses always work. He says he works a lot and should be allowed to release his stress by playing video games and that if I ever need a date night I just need to ask. I'm honestly done begging for his attention. The last thing that happened and made build a lot of resentment towards him was my birthday. I told him I wasn't expecting anything material but I was shocked to see he didn't was present for me on that day. It's easy for him to take time off at work since his schedule is very flexible. He's done it many times when he goes out with friends or just because he doesn't feel like going to work. Why couldn't he do it on my birthday? I'd like to add that he's my only family in this country and I literally spent the whole day by myself. I went to have lunch by myself and came home to be with my cat. After that I was ready to leave the relationship since I honestly realized I was the last person in his list of priorities. However, we had just bought a house and we were about to move in. I decided to come to the new house since he said it, we would be in a better place since we wouldn't be in the city and he likes this environment way more. I chose to believe him, but I can clearly see how my feelings towards him are slowly dying and I have zero patience for him. Our last fight was this week over video games again. I'm exhausted of having to treat my husband like a 12-year-old. He says, it's very simple, all you have to do is give me a reminder, all you have to do is tell me that you want me to come to bed. Well, no, I don't have to do anything. If I have to send you to bed like a child then don't expect me to treat you like a grown man in bed. I know I'm not perfect but I try to be the best wife I can be. I work full-time and still manage to keep my house running. I'm very clean, I do my best to be a nice person to everyone. I don't even speak English as my first language and I'm always looking to improve since I know how important communication is in marriage and I don't want the language to be an obstacle for us. But honestly, at this point I don't even care about it anymore. I won't keep forcing things to happen. As I said, I know my husband is not a bad person. He's not a cheater, I know he loves me but I also don't think I should be thankful for just getting the most basic things out of marriage. I still think emotional intimacy is very important and it's something that's lacking here. I don't enjoy his company as I used to and I've built a lot of resentment. I know many of you will suggest therapy but unfortunately, I already tried that and he won't go. He says if we can't communicate without a third party involved then he'll know we're done. I'm originally from Colombia. I came here with the intention to have a one-year intercultural experience and then I would go back home, therefore, I didn't finish college. When my husband proposed to me all my plans of course changed. We were looking for ways for me to finish college here but I would have had to apply as an international student and it was too expensive. Back home I had education for free. It was a hard decision for the both of us but we agreed that it was for the best of our new family's interest. My husband was getting education for free thanks to his military benefits and I wasn't willing to hurt him financially with my own school loan. That's why I went back home. 
I don't want to be the center of his world. I encourage him to do things that make him happy and to have fun because he started living an adult life since he was a teenager. He joined the army at the age of 17. However, I did sign up for marriage for a partnership. I also expect him to spend some quality time with me. I just would love for him to have a more balanced lifestyle where his desires and my needs were all met. I did tell him not to get anything material for me because honestly, I don't need anything. I work myself and treat myself with the things I want and need. Also, we had just purchased a house and I thought that was more than enough. I did make it clear that all I would wish was for him to be there on my birthday. The night before my birthday he asked me if I was sad. I said I was because I wasn't looking forward to spending my birthday by myself and said it's okay babe, just be happy we're moving to our new place soon. I thought he was lying and he was planning to surprise me with his presence since I know how easy it is for him to take the day off. He didn't and I was heartbroken. Ever since I got married, I've been taking it very seriously. I even read books and listen to podcasts of professionals that talk about marriage. These resources have taught me that open communication is very important. I try to be as mature as I can when it comes to marriage. I'm sure there are things I still need to improve but I'm willing to do it. So yeah, I constantly communicate my needs and feelings with my husband in the most positive way I can find but it might change for a couple days and then it goes back to normal and I'm tired of repeating something that at this point he should already know I expect from him. You mentioned you're married right. I know every family has a different dynamic. But I'm wondering if you were in my position you wouldn't mind pushing someone to do the things that you have already voiced so many times. Isn't it nice when a person starts making changes in their lifestyle because they know it'll make things easier at home? No, I'm not using bonding as a punishment. I'm a very physical person and would never think this is something that I'm just doing to please him. But that's the problem. All of our other issues have been affecting my desire for intimacy. And I refuse to do duty bonding. Finally, I'm not isolated by language. I'm fluently bilingual and I'm able to hold a conversation in English. When I mentioned that I didn't want language to be an obstacle I meant the ability to talk about very deep feelings and give a clear message of what is making me so unhappy. Even if you speak a second language fluently, you'll never feel as comfortable as with your native language. I do have friends and I sometimes make plans with them. They actually complain that I don't hang out with them very often but it's because I'm very busy being a wife, a teacher and a graduate student. And even if I have a strong friendship network. Again, what is the purpose of marriage if we can't be a team and make memories together? My friends cannot replace my husband that's what I feel. We actually did have a very nice relationship when we were dating. We were best friends and had lots of fun together. We hardly ever fought and it was the healthiest relationship I did so far. We were also so attracted to each other due to our physical differences that we found very exotic. I really feel like that year apart meant the before and after of our relationship. Once we got back together it was like I was with a totally different person. It was either that we learned to be without each other or maybe our lifestyles changed so much that it was impossible to go back to what we used to have. I would love to be able to fix our differences and build a life with him. I just happen to feel completely hopeless and don't know what else to do to make it work. I know he still loves me but I don't like the way he now loves me. I like the guy I felt in love with not this new version of him. Our problem is the way we see marriage. When I ask him why he's still with me his answer is because I love you and I think you would be a great mother and I think you're very smart and beautiful. In my case, I'd like to say I'm with him because we're a team together, because life is already very hard out there and in him, I can find peace and love and happiness. But that's not what I'm getting out of this marriage deal at the moment. I feel like I keep waiting for him to suddenly turn back into the person I met. I want to be as objective as I can. I'd like to clarify that my husband does not go out with friends all the time. It was a big problem at the beginning of our marriage because when I came back, he would go out more often and he would get very very drunk and he's not a nice drunk person. He has history of aggression, not with me, while being drunk and I always worry about him getting in trouble because although he doesn't go out all the time when he does and he has too much to drink he is not the nicest person. Yes, I would think that's the normal thing to do. You go out with friends and also sometimes you go out with partners as well. They've only done the latter in two occasions. I agreed to meet these people even though they had already said very bad things about me but I still wanted to have a nice relationship with them since they were becoming such a big deal in our marriage and the cause of many of our problems so I wanted to see if maybe meeting them and being kind to them would make things easier for us. I don't mind him playing games. I also like having my alone time. It becomes a problem after he's been there for close to five hours and it's bedtime and it's his one day off and for once we could actually go to bed together and watch a show, make love, I don't know. Just be a normal couple. I work from 8 a.m. to 2.30 and he works from 3.30 to 11.30 so we already have very limited time to spend together. So, when we do have the chance to spend time it hurts me to have to ask him to do it because he doesn't seem to think about these things. No, he's a very physical person and he complains that we're not as active as we used to be but for me, I need to have some interactions outside of the bedroom to be in the mood to be intimate. 
He'd love for him to be able to play games all day, get food served to him while still playing games and once he's done with that come to the bedroom and find a needy wife. I need to ask to have a date night, I need to choose the restaurant. Once we're there I need to carry the conversation and like yours some of our dates end up being horrible because I don't feel he's engaged and then I just want to go home. Yes, I work full time, I do have friends and I am a very active person. I think my problem is not related to codependency I think it is related to being extremely independent. My thoughts usually go like this. Okay, so I don't need someone to support me financially. This person is not interested in the same things I am. We don't share any hobbies or any type of social life together. I love him but at this point I don't even enjoy his company because we have nothing to talk about. What am I doing here? Oh yeah, that's true. I'm here because he's not the worst person in the entire world and we've been through so much together and he's always been there for me. We have a very serious commitment and I'm scared to start a life on my own and I'd rather think that a miracle is going to happen and we will have the life we've always dreamed of. Yes, I know there are things in marriage you do to please your partner. I just wish those things were chores like cleaning the kitchen or helping with trash but not things like hang out with me and have fun with me. I think those are activities that you should enjoy when you love someone. I now realize it was something that hurt us deeply, but at the moment it seemed like the right move and it was a decision we made together. It wasn't something selfish because I wasn't just thinking of myself. We were a young couple, he had just accepted a job as a police officer. He had a bright future in front of him and I knew I had to work for my future as well. What else could I have done? Stay home and be a housewife. I respect whoever chooses to do that but we wanted something different for us. We both wanted to be successful professionally. We're both very driven and ambitious in life. I didn't feel like saying, hey, now just go make money and I'll just stay home. Or hey, now I'm going to school here and I expect you to pay for it even though you never had to spend a dollar on your own education. The other day he had been forced to work overnight. I was missing him and was feeling horny. I couldn't wait for him to get home. Once he came home, he immediately said, babe, I need to make love, I just really feel like I have to let it out. He didn't want to make love because he loves me so much and missed me or because he looked at me and thought I was hot. He was asking for bonding because he had a physiological need and it was such a turn off for me. I had a conversation with him and explained to him how I felt and how it was important for me to have an emotional connection in order to be able to enjoy bonding. Once I have that connection and I feel the chemistry, I'm very open-minded in the bedroom and I'll do everything I can to please my husband and have fun myself. He said he would work on it. Next thing I know, we're fighting over video games again. An update, it's my husband's birthday today. After what happened on my birthday, I feel like he's completely rejecting any type of birthday celebration. He's never been the type of person who likes to make a big deal out of it and he doesn't like to be the center of attention. Back in the day we would go out for dinner and I would try to have a private celebration with him. This year he made very clear that he didn't want to go to a restaurant. I asked him to take the day off so that we could spend the day together and he said he couldn't. I tried to get a present for him but it just didn't work out. My friend's birthday was this weekend too and I left Friday and came back yesterday. They're still having a celebration but I came back to be with my husband today. He came home this morning since he was forced to work overnight. I tried to be very special although we're getting very distant lately. He seemed very uncomfortable being by my side. He had to go back to work and I tried to give him a hug but he just looked very uncomfortable and sad and wanting to just get me off of him as soon as possible. Having children with him is not in my checklist right now. I guess I am now in the process of understanding what the heck is going on here and I honestly feel like I'm grieving inside marriage. I feel extremely anxious and can't help but think about how damaged my marriage is and how it's so obvious that there's no US in our future. I have so many things to deal with, work, my masters, my parents are visiting soon, housework since we just moved here, all things that require me to be very productive but I just can't concentrate and get anything done. It makes me even more anxious and I find myself shaking feeling something in my chest I can't describe and just lying in bed trying to figure out how to put my life in order again. I just feel like I'm so emotionally drained that I have to energy to start a divorce process right now. I'm basically just waiting for him to take the first move. I've talked about divorce before and I know he resents me for that. I just don't know what else to do when he doesn't accept therapy as an option. We've been living just like roommates since we had our last fight. I know I started it because I felt like I just had to protect myself and my feelings so I decided not to expect anything from him any longer. Then his parents came to visit and he started, which he usually does, treating me like a stranger or something and I no longer have patience for him at all so I decided to distance myself. He asked me why I was acting like this and I told you I was treating him in the same way he treats me in front of people and he spoke. What do you want from me? You want me to start kissing you in front of my parents or what? My mom knows what's happening since she's the one person I feel I can trust. I feel so bad when I have to vent with her though. I don't want her to worry about me. My parents have always supported me and I'm sure they'd be there for me if I do decide to get divorced. I'd love for us to go to counseling and work it out. If there's something I need to acknowledge I'm all for that. I love him and I know I'm not perfect and I'm willing to fix whatever I have to. I can't force him to do that though. 
When I brought up this idea, he said that under no circumstances he would go to therapy then I said he could offer a solution to solve our problem since I didn't know what else to do. He said that his solution was very simple. We just had to forgive and remember we love each other and we don't do things with the intention to hurt each other. That's not an acceptable solution for me because I think you can forgive once but when the person doesn't change the behavior it does feel like they're doing it on purpose. What I keep wondering is why would he go through such a painful process with me, wait for me for a whole year, have a multicultural marriage, go through an immigration process so that I could get my residency, buy a house with me and still be so indifferent when it comes to our problems. I mean, does he actually love me? I don't know. I was a little nicer today because it is his birthday but even when I tried to give him a hug and noticed rejection from him, I didn't argue about it. I just left him alone. I feel like by taking those actions my husband is now doing the same exact thing though. It hurts a little but I honestly feel like it's his right to protect himself when it's clear that I'm protecting myself. I wonder what the purpose of the method is though. I'm doing it because I just refuse to keep feeling hurt and I've decided to just ignore him completely. I don't expect anything good to come out of this though. I assume if I'm now having this attitude, he deserves to act the same way with me. Does anyone here have experience with this method? If I had decided to stay in the US during that year, I could have never worked during my immigration process. By being in Colombia I was being both productive and diligent with school and immigration stuff. Now, I know it would have been hard for my husband to live in my home country, and I know by being here he was also working on his career and I don't blame him for doing that. But I was doing the exact same thing. Why does it seem like something negative? When I was about to come back, I knew what I was about to face. I knew it was going to be a hard transition and a process that required time and love. But when you're married and you're willing to make it work you do everything to reconnect with that person that you chose as a partner for life. I just don't understand what some people are trying to tell me. Correct me if I'm getting a little confused but what you're trying to say is that I wasn't being realistic for expecting my husband to behave like a husband. I mean, good for him, he had a nice year as a bachelor but I think common sense can also suggest that now the wife is home and some changes need to be made to the previous routine. A year later, some updates are, I started grad school and became very busy with both a new job position and school. Being in the new house was nice and we tried to bond a little more as a couple and go on some date night around town here and there. My husband progressively stopped hanging out with his police friends and spent more time at home. The current issues, I felt like everything was on my plate. Before and during the pandemic I did almost everything at the house since he was working way more than me. After we moved to the new house, the house was bigger, I had to work in person which is a two, five hour commute for me every day, and I was going to grad school. But despite all of this, most of the house chores were on me. I didn't think it was fair. I had felt very disrespected since it happened more than once that my husband wouldn't talk about some important things with me but then he would do it with other people like his dad or his friends. Example, he was applying for a new job and I asked him how he felt about the hiring process and if he thought he would get the job. He said he had a good feeling about it but didn't want to talk about it until he was certain he would get the job. I understood and was okay with him not sharing. A few days later we go to see his good friend and they immediately started talking about the new job and my husband shares with him every single detail about the process and why he thought they would hire him. I can't explain how I felt. We went to spend a week in a different state at his friend's house and it turned out not being fun at all. His friend and his wife have three little children and had a hard time leaving the house because of the children. I tried to help as a cold and my husband focused on playing video games with his friend. I started to feel very angry and frustrated because I put myself in a situation he would never put himself into for me. After the trip, I talked to him about all of this. I talked about lack of meaningful communication between us, how I felt there was no partnership and we were not working as a team and I informed him that I was going to stop making sacrifices for him. Like go to places I didn't want to go just to be there for him. Why? Because he never did it for me. The day I moved out, my friend invited us to her baby shower. I asked him if he would come with me and his initial answer was no. I said, fine, but I won't go to your friend's wedding in October. He said, what do you mean? They're expecting us both. I said, well, I never agreed to it. I don't want to go and I won't go. I explained that marriage had to be give and take and he said, yes, you're right, I'll go to the baby shower. We talked a few times about the baby shower and he was okay with going, even the day before. However, the day of the event he woke up in a bad mood. He started saying that guys didn't go to baby showers and asking if he really needed to go. I said, my friend already thinks you're going but if you don't want to go then fine, just stay. As we're on our way there, he continues to say how he was forced to go there because of my presence at the wedding crap. After 30 minutes, he says he'll pull over and get out of the car and that I can continue driving and he'll find his way home. Like a little child throwing a fit, I was so sad and mad but I said okay. When he's parking, I started tearing up and he says, never mind, I'll go with you. I spoke, get out of my car. He insisted he would come and I just wanted him to leave my car. I didn't want to be close to him because I felt like I needed alone time to cry and feel better. 
I had decided that I wasn't going either because I was an emotional mess at the moment. He got very frustrated and started screaming then we're f getting a divorce over this. Yeah, baby, let's f do it. That's all I wanted anyway, while he's punching his feast. That's when I knew I had to leave this man. I felt unsafe and scared. It's been a month since I left the house. I've rented a place and I go to my house to see my cat every weekend. So, I get to see him as well sometimes. We have friendly interactions but don't talk about our issues. When we talk about our issues it's usually via text. He went from I won't go to therapy to I'll do whatever it takes to have you back. I finally found a therapist but they advised that I do individual therapy first since it needs to be a safe place for me to talk and the whole reason I left the house was because I didn't feel safe. So, they don't want him there sitting next to me. I informed him about this individual therapy and he says great. Hopefully you'll feel ready to come back soon. My comment, you two are simply not compatible and never will be. You seem more domestically inclined, he is not. You want to do everything as a couple, he does not. I get him not wanting to go the baby shower, that is a lady thing. But, if it was important to you, he should have gone and had a good time. It likely would have been over in an hour and a half. You acted out of place when you visited his friend who has small children. You took your own frustration out on him in that instance. You should have stayed in a hotel and had lunch or dinner, somewhere nice, in between visits to the friend's place. Yes, you could have suggested that, though he could have, also. Remember, someday you may have little children and you will have to entertain guests at the same time. No, not with this husband. It is part of life that most everyone must go through. He is definitely unreasonable, not compatible with you. But you sound set in your ways, also. Get an amicable divorce.